Are we in a cold, dark car park here? Have I ever let you down? On occasion. There have been a few dirty restaurants on tour. Fair enough. Tonight, mm -hmm. we've got a very special launch that I figure we can have two very special chauffeurs mm -hmm. taking us to said launch. Oh. And here they are now. Orange or blue? Ooh. I'm going orange. Blue it is. Good evening. Hello. This is a very schmancy. Thanks for the lift. Very nice car indeed. What's going on? <laughs> Hi. So here we are. Back in Woking. Just going to drop you off here at the school bus. <laughs> How excited are you for this year? It's a new opportunity for us, like as drivers, to kind of show our skills because I think the driving styles are going to be, have to be a little bit different and the way you have to drive the cars, uh, how you work with your engineers as well, because it's a lot more of a development race, mm. especially so early on with this uh, new regulation. Here we are in your second year. I guess you have packed an awful lot in in that time, including a win for the team. That's what we do. Ready to build on that then? Ready for 2022? I've done what I needed to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's. Um, I think fe February, so like there's so much talking about it and it's like, uh, yeah, it's, but I just want to get there and yeah. like action. When you see that lake and the building, it's pretty yeah. iconic in F1, isn't it? It looks good. But when you get to come around here every night or get to go inside and see everything, see the boulevard, see all the cars, then uh, then you get a true taste of what it's like. It does look pretty magnificent. As much as, much as February is a grind for me, coming from Australia, it is pretty cool. We're in electric mode at the moment. It That's does how... feel really good in... Oh, hello. <laughs> well, listen, I'm excited to go have a look at these McLaren's new car this evening anyway. So, uh, tell you. thanks for the lift. Now you need to go get scrubbed up because we have got a very special launch. I do. See you shortly. See, I told you I wouldn't disappoint. Great to hitch a lift to such an iconic building and brand as this. And of course, it's not just home to Formula One. We also see these incredible supercars like the Artura. But with all the regulation changes this year, Nat, I think everyone's excited to see what the 2022 F1 car is going to look like. They absolutely are. And tonight is very special indeed because it's a launch for the whole McLaren racing family. Not just the MCL 36, the Formula One car, but the cars competing in IndyCar for Arrow McLaren SP, in Extreme E with MX, and Esports with McLaren Shadow. So, should we get the show on the road? Let's do it. and fantastic to look ahead to 2022. And we're back live at the MTC. Come on, guys. Because for the first time, 
time in a couple of years. We are delighted to be joined by some lucky McLaren fans and Sky competition winners, all wearing their beautiful papaya masks. Well done, you. Great to have you with us tonight. Well, 2022, of course, is a whole new chapter for McLaren with their first foray into a new series for them, Extreme E, an off-road championship. And that is going to help the team accelerate both their sustainability and diversity programs. Fantastic stuff, yes, because for the first time in history, McLaren welcomes a female driver. Give it up for the girls, come on. New Zealander Emma Gilmore, who will take the wheel of the MX car alongside American Tanner Faust. And before we unveil the livery that this incredible vehicle will be racing in in 2022, our fellow Sky presenter David Garrido caught up with the McLaren Extreme E team to get the lowdown before the season starts in Saudi Arabia in just a couple of weeks' time. Well, McLaren are no strangers to breaking new grounds, not just Formula One, of course, but think Can-Am, Indy 500, IndyCar, and now a first ever entry into electric motorsport with Extreme E. I'm delighted to say we're joined by drivers Tanner Faust and Emma Gilmore, and also engineers and sisters, Lena and Tina Gay. Great to have you with us. We're going to start off actually by looking back at COP26. McLaren revealed a one-off livery. And Emma, you were announced as the team's female driver, but not only that, you were also rubbing shoulders with royalty, with His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales there to help you make the announcement. So it must have been a bit of a, a pinch myself moment for you. And I know that Emma and Lena, you were involved. So what was that like? Emma, you first. Totally surreal to, you know, you always look at the royal family on TV uh, and then to be actually meeting him, um, you know, his royal highness. It was amazing. I got opportunity to do a curtsy, which I never thought I'd have that opportunity. <laughs> so, yeah, it was all amazing. It was really surreal. I didn't think I was going to be doing that that morning. When he did arrive, it was, it was just... It was really cool. And he knew so much about engineering and um, the car. He was asking tons of questions. He knew about my sister and the background of my family. I thought it was great. So cool. Yeah. Emma, what's it like to be McLaren's first ever female driver? Uh, I mean, that's a pinch me moment. You know, I still get goosebumps uh, being here, being part of the McLaren story. Coming from New Zealand uh, and Bruce McLaren, uh, you know, starting the McLaren story, uh, it's kind of like full circle to, to be a female uh, and the first female for McLaren. So, yeah, very, very honoured. What about the Odyssey 21, though, Tanner? What's it like to drive? How does it compare to what you've driven before in Rallycross? Compared to a Rallycross car, it's quite a big machine. It, but being electric, it's instant torque. You know, the response is very, very quick. Um, it's very fast, 550 horsepower, essentially. Um, and it has a huge amount of suspension travel. So it's like driving a really fast marshmallow over amazing <laughs> terrain. Um, you know, it, it seems about right, right? No, it's really a, a fun car to drive. I think it's going to be a great race machine. Tina, you're one of a, a select few who will be keeping this car in mint condition, I'm sure. What are the challenges? What have you learned already? So we've had a, two full days of testing and then a quick shakedown. And we had a chance to run through a few of the setup changes and quite a few of the driver settings. The challenges really for us are making sure that we can adapt the car for both drivers. So they both have slightly different driving styles. Um, so they both want something slightly different from the car. And of course, the way for the to get the speed out of the car and to achieve the best performance is going to be giving them both the car that they can work with. And Lena Extreme, of course, stands for gender equality. One male, one female driver. But what about your role leading for females in STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths? How important is that for you? I think it's incredibly important um, having role models and having p people who are visible for young girls um, and young people in general to see that um, motorsport is a career that can be taken up by males or females. Um, in addition to that, McLaren's got an Engage program, which is a partnership between um, different organisations, including the Women's Engineering Society, and that's to help promote um, STEM within organisations, um, schools and for young people. Obviously, such a huge environmental thrust in this series. How important is that to you, Tanner, and how important is it to McLaren? Well, I think McLaren has a history of, of finding, I mean, even just this building, um, you know, carbon neutral um, setting that we're sitting in. But um, the series, I've been lucky to, to race cars for 25 years, and I think for motorsport to continue, there needs to be more motorsports like Extreme E. And it's great that McLaren is embracing that. And, it, you know, 
carrying scientists around the globe to do environmental studies in regions that maybe don't have the technology or the scientists to do those studies themselves, um, get testing on the ocean along the way on, on, uh, on the ship. It's an amazing thing that I think will help make motorsport um, a more responsible thing for companies and manufacturers to be involved in and hopefully will give us you know, a place where we can play with uh, machines and, and do things in a responsible way for years to come. And Tina, I understand you're doing your bit to save the planet. Ahead of Sardinia, what are you planning to do? So I actually live near Modena in Italy and I am planning to ride my bike to the event in Sardinia. Whoa. I mean, what is that like as a ride? Uh, so there's a 10 hour boat in the middle, so that's quite nice. Handy. So there's, okay. a, there's, there's potentially an overnight stop there, but it's a nice ride. So you have to go over the spine of the mountains of Italy first, down to the port. Then from the port, it's the boat, and then all the way from the north of the island down to the south. Uh, in total, it's going to be about three days of cycling and about 120 kilometres a day. So not, not crazy, but quite a lot, quite hilly. Emma, you've driven Sardinia before. You actually have a unique position here in that you are more experienced than Tana at Extreme E. So how is that working as a driver pairing? What are you sharing? Yeah, I think it's, it, I can, you know, show some insight into what it's been like racing in Extreme E. I think, you know, before I took part in the series, you watch it on TV and you think, ah, yeah, that looks okay. It doesn't look, you know, I, I can give that a go. And then when you're actually taking part, it's, you know, a lot more difficult than, than as it looks from, from sitting on the couch. So it's been really valuable being able to share that knowledge with Tanner and, uh, you know, working together as a team and, and, you know, through that testing that we did together, um, last year, just, you know, working things out and how we're going to attack the season. It's a really unique opportunity actually to get involved in a series with somebody who literally has hands-on experience in that and I think with the engineering with McLaren Emma's experience I mean we have as good a chance to hit the ground running as as any team possibly could thank you so much it's great to speak to you and good luck for the season ahead your debut season in Extreme. I'm sure it's gonna be an absolute blast and in fact it is almost upon us because the 2022 campaign starts off with the Desert X Prix in Saudi Arabia on February the 19th and 20th. Well, we can't wait to see the extremely car hit the desert in Saudi Arabia in just a couple of weeks' time. And we're delighted to say we have the XE drivers, Emma and Tana, here with us in the studio. Hi, guys. <laughs> and stay tuned because we'll reveal the new livery it'll be racing in a little later on in the show. Indeed, but now it's time to cross across the pond um, to our American brothers and sisters, McLaren's brothers and sisters at Arrow McLaren SP. The team are heading into their third season of the IndyCar Championship, but this time, for the first time, McLaren own a majority stake in the team. Which is a great thing, and the team had a very strong season, of course, in 2021 with two wins for Pato Award and some great drives from Felix Rosenquist. So let's head over then to Indianapolis, where Katie Carl is with Pato, Felix and team president Taylor Kyle to look ahead at another exciting season with Arrow McLaren SP. 22-year-old Pato Award, the future of IndyCar right here. Pato Award, Mr. Energy, Mr. Fasthead. Oh, boy, oh, oh, Pato Award yeah. is an IndyCar winner. Felix Rosenquist in the Arrow McLaren SP. Rosenquist goes to the top. A Rosenquist starts oh. on Pagano. Turn eight, great move. Pato Award leads this race for the first time. This is for the win. Nice job. Pato Award is a total winner. This kid is going to be around for a long time. Welcome inside Aaron McLaren SP here in Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm Katie Kyle, joined by Pato Award, Felix Rosenquist, and team president Taylor Kyle. Guys, we're just a few weeks away from the 2022 season. We are. We're, uh, we're excited. Uh, we had a great 2021 together, and which is... Really looking forward to seeing what, what, what this year has in store for us. Um, you know, I'd be lying if I said that the, the, the goals weren't to, to, you know, make that championship happen, have another go at the 500. We were really close last year, so we've set the bar high. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So I think we just need to really focus on, on, on what our strengths are and, and keeping those and then just making our weaknesses better. And I think that's just, just you know, put us in a better position to, to fight at the end of it. I'm excited. I think there's a lot of new things coming along with the team. And, you know, I have a new engineer that I'm working with, uh, Craig. And we have the whole, you know, partnership with McLaren uh, becoming even tighter. So, yeah, it's super exciting times for sure. Taylor, now that the McLaren acquisition is complete, what do you feel the team will gain this season? 
Well, I think uh, quite a bit. You know, I think our, foundationally we're a very strong uh, organization, but what this has allowed us to do is tap into the uh, tremendous amount of resource and expertise, but more importantly, uh, a lot of really smart, driven, focused individuals. This team is packed with talent. Um, McLaren Racing across all of its uh, organizations is, is fantastic. So to be partnered with that, to be able to tap into that, it's invaluable. And I think, you know, ultimately it gives us a resource that nobody else in the IndyCar paddock has. So that's, that's a great advantage to us. When you start talking to race car drivers about speed, your eyes always light up and you had some incredible speed at Texas and Indianapolis this year. What did you like about that car? I thought the super speedways were very, like me together with the car we had there was just amazing. It clicked straight away, we were competitive. We were actually fighting at the front in all three of those races. And then it was kind of like a breakthrough on ovals for me as, as well last year. So I think this year having that experience with me and with the team, I think we can do some real damage on the ovals for sure. Speaking of the Indianapolis 500, Juan Montoya is back, two-time Indianapolis 500 champion. The band's back together. What do you like about racing with Juan? He's just a fun guy to have around. He's a huge character in every way, racing, outside of racing, just as a person. He's, he's just very genuine, very direct, and uh, <laughs> it's just a lot of fun. We, we really enjoyed him uh, in the team in the month of May last year. Taylor, the team has some incredible partners. Aero Electronics has been around for several seasons now. Views is fairly new to the team, but they're both very active partners. How important is that in today's motorsports? Well, it's incredible. And anytime you're associated with uh, organizations like Aero and Views, their passion and their energy and their uh, desire to connect with the fans is totally aligned with what, what we want to do as as, as an organization. I got to imagine something else that gives you a little extra tenth on track is your fan base. You're, they are intense. I, I love hearing the chants from the stands every time I'm on pit lane. Uh, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's, it's been really cool and I've, and I've really truly seen like a, a difference in messages and just people that are watching the races and, and it's really cool. It's really cool to see all the five shirts out there. At the end of the season last year, I saw a lot, a lot of support. And that's, I mean, that's, that's all you can ask for whenever you're fighting for a championship and, uh, you know, you're up, going up against the best. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really nice. Hopefully we can, you know, grow that even more. So one of the things I was hoping you would say that you've been working on this off season is keeping your hair the exact same. The flow. Yeah, the flow is <laughs> yeah. good. It's good, looking good. You like it? I do. You like it? Yeah. I just think it's it was uh, it was a very a lot easier to maintain. You just grab water and go straight back. But can you keep it the same when you get your helmet off? That's the important. Ah, uh, we're gonna have to see I after. Like, uh, I like the electrocution look. <laughs> you do? Yeah. I don't cool. like. I, water doesn't even get that down. Nah. Like you put water on top and it's still. <laughs> Taylor, your new dad, we're new parents, have just a four-month-old baby. How did these guys prepare you for a baby? Did we uh, help train you? I, I think probably a little bit. You know, last night I was up at 2 o'clock in the morning with a screaming baby. It reminded me a lot of, of some of our races this year. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, good one. <laughs> I have watched this team grow from what was Sam Schmidt Motorsports, now Aaron McLaren SP, and Taylor, you started at this team when it was just Sam Schmidt Motorsports. How rewarding has this whole process been now to be a championship contender on both levels? Well, it's been it's been awesome because that's what you that's what you think about, that's what you desire when when you come to work in racing. Nobody likes to race just to be here. Everybody wants to race to win. You know, I've seen the dynamic of this team change from a small team that maybe can to a, a team that fights every weekend with the big dogs of the sport. So it's been a wild ride, no doubt. It's been a lot of hard work by a lot of people. We're not there yet, but we're close, and we'll continue to fight and continue to work hard and, and uh, see where the chips fall. Thank you, Katie, and great to hear from the Arrow McLaren SP team, who, of course, have such an exciting season ahead, and they've got the chance to really build on some great results from 2021. Now... We are getting closer to the moment that you've all been waiting for. The reveal of the McLaren MCL36. Lando and Daniel haven't yet got behind the wheel of the car on track, but they have, of course, driven it in the simulator. Well, not only is the simulator a great tool and hugely important tool for car development, but the drivers themselves, 
well, I think you all seen Lando on Twitch, I guess, at home. Yeah. You know, they all use it to hone their skills. And it, unquestionably, it's a great way for the fans to get involved and really develop their race craft against millions of other gamer racers around the planet. The pandemic has probably helped the Definitely. growth of esports because people are bored at home and playing. Well, certainly I was. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think there's been a massive growth in, in the esports world in recent times. And the lines between esports drivers and racing drivers are getting increasingly blurred, aren't they? 100%. Now, McLaren has been a long-standing pioneer in the gaming world with its own esports academy. Given the importance of grassroots talent in motorsports and the influence of simulator feedback, as you say, in performance, McLaren has recently unveiled a state-of-the-art McLaren Shadow Studio right here at MTC. And we sent Karun along to find out a little bit more. We're here at the incredible McLaren Shadow Studio at the MTC, and I'm very lucky to be joined by Ben Daly, the ambassador, and of course, Josh Edo. You're going to be racing for the team this year, having graduated. First of all, guys, what does it mean to you to have the studio here at the MTC? To me, it means that McLaren race and take esports very seriously, and they see the benefits of it. Uh, it's great to have a home within the McLaren Shadow Studio. It's just a really cool place to hang out and make content. We've got the F1 rigs, we've got uh, Rocket League going on in the background, gaming stuff, so it's a great place to just chill out. Well, I think it's time for us to have a little go, isn't it? Yeah. Can we climb in? Let's yeah. do it. So, Ben, you don't have to be a pro racer like Josh or have a rig like this to drive the MCL 36 at this time, do you? No, no, that's true. Uh, all you need is uh, a PC or a mobile device to gain access to Roblox. Then you can jump in the world. It's an open world game and it's very accessible for people of all skill levels. You can have access to the car. You can walk around the virtual MTC and then take part in a few challenges. And it's, it's really, really cool. It's amazing, isn't it? Because people on Roblox can drive the new car even before Lando and Daniel get to drive the MCL 36, right? I know, that's the, the crazy thing about it. The power of gaming these days. So, uh, yeah, jump in, have a go, and you can make Lando and Daniel jealous. What's not to love? Josh, I guess you guys are both McLaren racing fans. Are you excited to see the MCL 36? Yeah, I'm super excited to see it, and also to see how it compares to the new McLaren Shadow livery as well. What can we expect from McLaren Shadow in 2022, Ben? Well, more gaming, more content, uh, basically what we're doing, to be honest, and, and hopefully we'll be able to get the esports guys in and train them up and, and be competitive again this year. Right, guys, enough of playtime. Should we go see the new car? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Well, a fascinating insight there into that impressive esports program and plenty more to come from them throughout the year, no doubt. Now, we're getting very close to the big reveal of what the MCL 36 look like alongside the IndyCar, Extreme E and Shadow teams from the McLaren racing family. But before we do, I don't think any, especially of these fans here, will forget the incredible moment from Monza, the team's oh. one, two, the first time Can we have a in 11 Monza? years. <laughs> Come on. I mean, it was magnificent, wasn't it? A, a great day for everyone at uh, McLaren, of course, but this year will be an even bigger challenge. We've got new sporting regs, new technical regs. We're going to see what the new car looks like in a little bit. And it's going to create more exciting racing and even better sustainability, of course, with the, uh, with the new fuel. Great stuff. Well, shall we speak to the two drivers who are going to be driving that MCL 36? Let's give it up then for Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo. <laughs> Hello and welcome. So, how was the winter? Lando, great tan. And you, actually. Thanks. You've both been in sunny climes, haven't you? What have you been up to? Uh, a bit of everything. Just enjoying some time away from here. Uh, as oh, much as on. it's lovely to be back now. Um, yeah, away from the racetrack, you know, taking some time away with my friends and so on. Um, eating a bit of food and then uh, getting back to training and making sure I'm bit ready of golf? for the season. A lot of golf. Obviously actually. a lot of golf. That's yeah. the obvious one. I mean, for you, going back to Oz, a bit like me, first time in two years, seeing the family, that must have been great. How was, that's got to help your prep for 2022, isn't it? Yes, it was, um, yeah, you can relate, much, much overdue, much needed. And uh, yeah, I mean, getting home in general is nice, but obviously to spend it with family and see some friends and just do, uh, do some like normal, simple things for a few weeks felt, felt really good. Food for the soul. And Lando, coming into your fourth season, with the team, a new contract, 
Come on, guys, new contract. That is good news. How good is that for your mindset going into the season? It's, uh, I think, probably the best way to start the season, really. Um, a lot of confidence, you know, it's nice to see the, the faith the team have in myself and then the same back, to, back the other way. So, um, really good, you know, to, to continue the journey we've been on so far. Of course, we wanted to keep making progress. And we know um, our goals, in, especially in like 24, 25, is to, to really try and reach the top. So, uh, nice to be here till then and continue our journey we've been on together. Great stuff. Well, Danny, second year. McLaren what's that going to do in terms of prep you know the people you know the way you're going to head into the season a bit better than before yeah that's yeah. going to help isn't it yeah. a bit more than and that you're basically saying come on mate uh, pull your finger well, out come on. you want to you want to race last year so yeah. two three yeah that would be nice one. but it must feel it's, different to this time last year absolutely it does you know it's it's um don't get me wrong, it's obviously very exciting joining a new team, but it's also kind of overwhelming. There's a lot to do in such a short period of time. So I'm kind of glad that that heavy lifting is done. Um, and, you know, coming into this season now, it was kind of even like first day on the simulator. It was like just open the doors, walk in, and it's like, all right, guys, where are we at? Let's, let's get into it. So um, from that point of view, I think it's just going to flow a lot easier this year. And I'm not saying things are going to come easy, but um, it'll be more efficient well, it's your 12th year in Formula 1. You've seen a few rule changes now, 14. So. He doesn't look old enough. That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> this guy's here just basically saying I'm 50 years old. Oh, yeah, basically. <laughs> but with, you know, the new cars and new rules coming in, do you think the experience of going through these rule changes in the past is going to help you to get, get used to the new cars here? I, like, I hope so. Like, experience is... You know, it can't be bought, and I think throughout moments, you know, through the season, whether that's all at the beginning when we're trying to adapt to the new car or, or later, I think it will pay off at some point, and there will be little things I can take from experience. So, um, yeah, I think learning the new car, especially testing, is, is so important for us, and trying to just, um, yeah, there could be things that I've learned over the years which might just help me just be one step ahead um, in certain moments, occasions. So, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll use the experience, but I'm still a, a young soul, so young I'll keep, I'll keep yeah. that in me as well. Well, talking of experience, Lando, to get those four podiums and your first pole position last year, you must be able to sort of leverage that and take that momentum into 2022. How excited are you to yeah. build on that? Uh, I mean, I would like to. That's, uh, that's the aim, you know, is to start off the season how we did. I wouldn't say end the season because that wasn't so good. But uh, how we were in the beginning of last year is how we want to kind of start this season. And um, I think many other areas have, have improved for sure. Um, it's just we have to wait and see where we're going to be. So we're working hard, but uh, there's a lot of unknowns, so time will tell. That's what's exciting though, right? For us lot, anyway, maybe not for you so much. Well, yeah, I was going to say, it's more stressful for them. I yeah, think. I guess. But I mean, Dan, surely with new rules, you know, is there one area that you think you need to focus on for... You know, for driving the new car, and because they're, they're different, aren't they? They're heavier. The downforce is produced in a different way. Is there an area you think you need to focus on? Uh, I mean, with the new, with the new cars, I think it's going to be very much about uh, kind of just being open-minded. With you know, I'm sure some things will be expected in terms of if we approach a corner like this, then the car's going to do that. But then other times it might not behave that way. So it's about trying to understand, OK, what do I need to do to get this car in a place where it's happy? So the long and short of it is just to drive, I think, at least in testing with a very open mind and kind of do what you know, but be very experimental as well to see what the car likes. Uh, and then, I mean, for me, as the season goes on or, or kind of looking at the season ahead, yeah, it's just to be consistently at a higher level than I was in 21. That's, <laughs> that'll help me out as well. Great. Lando, you were in the sim earlier this week. Um, how's prep going? What, what do you think of driving the new car in the sim? And, you know, it, it, how much, how different is it? Uh, I mean, it is very different. Um, it's obviously like, you know, we started driving it already last year. Um, and we have the sim drivers as well who are always trying to de develop it as, uh, as well. But um, it's always, it's changing every time we go back in it, you know, because there's constant evolution, there's constant upgrades getting brought to the car. Um, but it's getting better. Of course, it's like rough when you start because there's so many things to do to it. Um, but it's nice to see the progress from where we were last year to where we are now and then hopefully trying to, to continue that. But, you know, the simulator, what we have at the moment is just our best guess of what it's going to be like. 
um, and until we get actually in the in the car itself, we're not going to know what it's truly like. So it's um, it's a good start for sure, and uh, we're working as hard as possible to to make it better. Okay, one of our audience members, Megan, would like to put a question to both of you. Megan, where are you? There she is. Hello. Great colour coordination, by the way, with the set. You look fantastic. Very good. Um, and Megan's question is, which race are you both looking forward to most this season? I'm going to be greedy and take a few. Uh, <laughs> but firstly, Melbourne, uh, the home race. And it's, yeah, not only because it's the home race, but, um, you know, there also there's track changes. The, the layout's going to be different. So just excited to also go to, like, a new Melbourne. Um, and then I know he's probably going to say Miami, so... That's that's one as well. I think we're both looking forward to. Is that more about the after party though? Well, time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell. Uh, but there's there's many. Like with 23, there's a lot to pick and choose from. But uh, I'll say those two for now. New additions. I mean, she only wanted one, but thanks for being generous, <laughs> Lando. Uh, I think Silverstone is the obvious one for me. Um, the British British fans to see all of them again, um, but the main ones main ones I look forward to are the ones we've just not been to for the last few years. Of course, Miami being the new one, but uh, going back to Japan, back to Singapore, they're just cool countries to go to and, and get to have a good experience at, and uh, and awesome tracks as well. So, those are on my agenda. Great stuff, thanks guys. Right, I think it's about time, don't you? Do you think it's about time? Yes, the moment we've all been waiting for to see just what these four McLaren racing cars are going to look like as they go racing in 2022 and reveal the McLaren MCL 36 live right here in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, just so that you're aware, there will be flashing images. Let's unveil the cars. Gentlemen, can I get your first reaction? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. No, I, I love it. Um, lovely colours, pops a lot more, I think, than, than last season, stands out a lot. Uh, shame it's the number three where you'll be seeing now because number four looks much better from this side. But um, <laughs> apart from that, it looks great. It does pop, though. I mean, there's no missing that on track, is there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's vibrant. Um, it's awesome, you know. I think, you know, when... Formula One is a lot about performance, and that is, like, primary purpose. But what comes a close second is looking good. And I'm very pleased that before we've even hit the track, we look good. So we've, we've ticked a big box. That's incredible to finally see it all built together, isn't it? Because you guys have seen it down in the race base, the mechanics putting all the bits and pieces together. It's quite special to see it complete here, isn't it? Uh... <laughs> I think it is, especially because, um, you know, this was meant to come out in, what, 20, 2020 or something. So already seeing all the drawings and, and visions back then and seeing how it's all come together to, to put this to, together and seeing all the engineers and mechanics um, making the parts and coming from, like, single bolts and whatever to, to put it all together like this is pretty cool. So always a pleasure to, to be part of and to see. And also great to see the other three cars behind us, the um, Arrow McLaren SP, MX and Shadow cars, all looking stunning. And a little nod to its green uh, credentials there with the, um, the blue being a slightly different colour to your blue. Did you notice that? It is. Mm. Like that. Well, I mean, the livery looks fantastic, doesn't Beautiful. it? Across all Absolutely the cars. That, that was Flora Papaya, the new colour. There you like, go. Thank you very much. Now, but yeah, yeah. It's, it does look fantastic. OK. Thank you, chaps, for now. Um, I think we do should have another round of applause for the car, for the drivers, for everyone. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now, we know that the 2022 does bring with it 
a whole raft of changes to the regulations which has led to the design of this incredible car that Lando and Daniel will be racing this season. And uh, now that we've seen it in the flesh, let's go behind the scenes with Technical Director James Key, Operations Director Piers Thin and Racing Director Andrea Stella to understand what, ta what it takes to design and build a car from scratch. So we sent uh, Karun in to find a little bit more about it. The 2022 Formula One rules represents the biggest change to the chassis regulations in 40 years. And therefore I thought it would be a good idea to find three of the technical minds here at McLaren to try and talk me through some of the challenges ahead. James, has there been any carryover at all from 2021 into the new car? Uh, not really. I mean, it's a, it's a, it is a, a blank sheet of paper. And I think um, there are sort of some smaller areas under the skin where things like sort of certain aspects of fuel system design or hydraulics design, that sort of thing, which can still package within the spaces we've got of a 22 car. Um, but the vast majority of it is is new. I think the only thing we've really been able to carry over is our knowledge of how to design a, a Formula One car and the methodologies and the sort of the beliefs and what makes a quick car and what doesn't. It's always complex in a winter build and the culmination of the regulations and the quantity all coming together has made it a pretty tough winter but the guys and girls across the factory have risen to the challenge. Let's talk about the process of conceptualising and designing the 2022 cars, because obviously very different to recent years. You've got to, from a conceptual point of view, try and meld all of the, the current knowledge and expertise you have into something which allows you to, to for example, join these new tyre characteristics to your aero characteristics, to your, to your suspension characteristics. And a lot of it was theoretical and, I suppose, um, very conceptual for a long time whilst we tried to, to do all that work. This is my 25th season now, I think, and I, and I haven't seen something of this magnitude. You know, it's always been variations on a theme. Do you approach the race weekends together with the race engineers differently in terms of the run plan and, and, and the programme for the weekend? The timetable this year will actually offer a bit more time to rest, thanks to extended curfew time. Uh, I think the significant change came uh, last year with the duration of free practice from 90 to 60 minutes. That had a big impact. The session is very tight. You need to be absolutely sharp. We as a team at McLaren, we are in a long-term uh, journey. And for us, it's important that we see progress and we make step forwards year after year. So coming to uh, this year specifically, I'm very encouraged with the level of uh, um, and the, the quality of uh, design and simulation that I've seen. Uh, but now we are ready to make the, the next step, which is uh, correlation. We have made large investments in terms of uh, a new wind tunnel, in terms of a new simulator. We've now gone back to ground effects for the first time since 1982. Do you see that being the real big differentiator between the teams and the path of development? I think it's the enablers to get the floor to really tug hard with the ground effect. So it will be visible things, you know, front wing is very restricted, but there are, there are subtleties in there which can be, can be changed and developed, etc. It will be an aero race as always. So last year we had three days of testing, this year we have six, so already looks like it's much more. But uh, in reality, with a new project and two drivers, uh, testing is going to be tight and it will look very short. So we'll have to be very efficient, uh, sharp, well organized, and we'll need uh, reliability such that we don't lose uh, uh, running time. How much of a challenge has it been to you know, design and build this year's car while, of course, the MCL35 was racing competitively last year? Uh, so that's always a trade that you have to make. Uh, switching your resources at the right time uh, is a key one to make. And we were assessing that race by race through last year. But do you still have a few butterflies before the car first runs on track? Always. Uh, but that's part of the fun of getting out of a winter build uh, and into the season starting. Uh, but I think it's fantastic for everyone back in the factory uh, and also our fans and partners to make sure that we roll out in good order and really looking forward to it. That. It is absolutely fascinating to see how a Formula One car can just come to life from those initial concept drawings to what we see here in front of us. Brilliant stuff and obviously a monumental team effort to bring all this together.
Oh, absolutely. I mean, also, Andrea Stella's accent. Fantastic. I could listen <laughs> to that man all day long. As can Lando. I think he's a massive fan. Uh, but I think this is as good a moment as any to introduce the people spearheading this team. Let's bring on uh, McLaren Racing CEO Zach Brown and the Formula One team's team principal, Andrea Seidel. <laughs> We've heard so much work has gone into this. How would you sum up the winter period? Well, it was definitely a very intense winter. Uh, there were many extra hours required from everyone in order to get to this place today and be able to present the car. So, yeah, I can't thank enough, really, every single member of the team for all this commitment and, and hard work. I can't thank enough also Piers, James and Andrea uh, for leading all that. And, uh, yeah, simply proud to be in a position today on behalf of the team to stand next to this, this car and see it in, in one piece. Well, you've still got all your hair, so that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's an exciting challenge, isn't it, having a regulation change like this. Do you feel the team are ready to head to first Barcelona and then Bahrain, of course? Yeah, I definitely feel that the team is ready. I mean, we had a great season last year. We learned a lot again. We're going into our second year now also with the Mercedes power unit, uh, which is a benefit. Uh, we have consistency and continuity also with our driver lineup with uh, Daniel and Lando, which will be important as well. So we could really focus on trying to explore really the maximum out of these new uh, regulations. And I have to say, I'm, I'm very happy how the team was approaching that, that challenge. I guess we made another step forward in terms of how we all work together between the different departments as well. Lando and Daniel put in a lot of energy as well in the last uh, weeks in order to, to get ready. So. I think we're ready. I'm looking forward to actually hit the track soon. OK, so what does it mean in terms of performance? What are your expectations? That's what everyone here wants to know. Uh, well, the most important thing is, I guess, to simply keep this positive momentum up that we have created in the last years. We have uh, ambitious targets at McLaren. We all want to be part of the generation at McLaren to get back into a position where we regularly can fight for race wins and, and also championships. At the same time, we have a realistic view on where we are on this journey. We still need more time to further grow as a, as a team. We need more time as well in order to complete all our big infrastructure projects, mainly the wind tunnel. But still, uh, we go into this season ambitious and hungry, and uh, we will try again to further close the gap to the teams that have been running in front of us last year, and uh, hopefully we manage to, again, collect more trophies than last year. You know he's hungry a lot of the time now. He's on a whole intermittent fasting thing. Right? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually a, true. Yeah. I should I have know. told you. He, had a, he gave me a whole thing about Are you going to lost weight. Yeah. That sounds quite hard. <laughs> I wanted to give you a hint, but... Yeah, but you were... You, you know, the, when you said you were grumpy in the morning, that sort of put me off a little bit. But, <laughs> I um, think it's breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we let you go, Andreas, there's a, there's a question here from Matt Abraham, one of the fans who is here in the audience. There he is over there. Um, and he's, he's, I'm going to have to read this out because it's quite a long question, but it's a good one. Uh, how do you keep up team morale and a winning attitude while also managing expectations, being realistic where you guys are at, and also your long-term plan to be competitive in a couple of years? And fasting. Put a factor in the fasting <laughs> to that. How do you keep that up? Um, I think it's simply always important to be straight and transparent with the team on where you are, uh, setting clear, clear targets as well. I think it's also important being part of this, this great sport to create, let's say, a spirit and a culture within the team that everyone feels valued and feels being part of a sports team and, and is aware of how important his or her individual contribution every day is uh, for the overall performance of the team or, or the car. And then, uh, I guess, if you have that culture, you have also this morale that you need in order to go the extra mile every day. And uh, if you then have also to... Very positive drivers like Lando and Daniel, uh, I think it's a big help as well. If you then have from time to time some, some great results as well to celebrate, I guess that's what is required in order to have this morale within the team that you need. There you go, Matt. Happy with that? Thank you. <laughs> Got a thumbs up over there. Right, Zach, to you now. What are your first impressions of this car and indeed the whole McLaren Racing family behind you? Well, I think it, uh, it looks spectacular. I can't wait to see it. Uh, on the racetrack. All the men and women at McLaren have worked so hard to put this together and our entire racing uh, portfolio. I think it's pretty exciting to announce four cars at, at once. Uh, we had our first win in almost uh, 10 years with uh, Daniel, our first pull in uh, a, a decade with Lando, a couple wins in, in IndyCar. Uh, no doubt Tanner and Emma 
are going to have a strong uh, season this year. So to see it all come together, it's great for our fans. It's great for our, our people. Uh, great partners, over a, a dozen new partners joining us last year. And then, of course, you know, sustainability is critically important to us and gender equality, one of the big reasons why we entered uh, Extreme E. So I think very exciting times ahead for us. Absolutely. I mean, as you said, it's an exciting time, but there's also a lot to do, Zach, though, isn't it? I mean, you've got four championships here. You're entering a new one at Extreme E. You've taken over a majority stake in the IndyCar team. Obviously, F1 is developing. How are you managing your time with all of this? Because this sounds like an awful lot to do for one person. Um, you have great people around you. You know, and Andreas leading the Formula One team and, and, and his team have done a fantastic job. If you look at the journey that we've been on, you have great racing drivers uh, and great, great leadership teams. So I think uh, the success when you have a big organization like this and multiple racing series, it's all about surrounding yourself with, with great people. And I find myself very... Uh, fortunate to be working with the Andreases uh, and, and the Lauras and the Daniels and the Tims and everyone that makes up the leadership team that runs McLaren Racing. And delegate, that's the key, isn't it? Just keep delegating. Do as little as possible, let them do all the work. <laughs> then take the glory, <laughs> right? Um, you mentioned the partners before and just looking at the car, there's some great names on there. Uh, tell us what the winter was like from a commercial perspective. Uh, it's always very busy. You know, Pete, People tend to think when we're not racing, that's kind of downtime, when in reality is we've just got different cycles to what we do. And uh, in the winter, it's all about um, working to kind of get this beautiful livery on all these different racing cars and developing plans with our, our partners and you know, closing deals and uh, uh, renewing partners, which we renewed uh, about 10 uh, this year. And so doing a lot of work. WebEx did a huge TV campaign with us. So uh, we stay very busy uh, over the winter, but I think now it's time to go racing. Absolutely. Well, we've got another fan question for you from Leo Palmer. Leo, where are you? He's down there. Um, Leo's question is, is really about how you organizationally, how do you stoke a culture across the four different teams to feel apart, like they're all, they're a part of a wider family of McLaren, really? Um, well, as Andreas said, you know, it's, it's all about the people. We're a bunch of racers in, in McLaren racing, so it's more like they keep me motivated. Uh, and we keep each other motivated. It's a highly tuned uh, sports culture inside McLaren Racing. So everyone loves what we do. Um, everyone wants to, to win. And uh, I think now that we're starting to have some success, the, uh, the momentum's just building. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Zach. Right, should we welcome our drivers back onto the stage, please? Lando and Daniel. for another audience question from Anne Chubb. Where are you, Anne? There you are. Hi, Anne. And Anne asks, uh, which one of you will get the most overtakes this year? I figure I kind of know what either of both of you are going to say. Ho hopefully not me. Oh, because you'll be further back? If you get more you overtakes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. OK. That's, yeah, you thought we were going to say something else. Yeah, <laughs> but maybe with the sprint races? No, OK. No. The more we're taking you just want to be on pole and on. then deliver the win, right? Perfect. Mm. Yeah, good. But winning from the back would be cool. That, oh, yeah, well, that's true. That's true. You get more glory if you win from the back. So I will, if I could take both, I'll take both. <laughs> Overtake and wins. You absolutely can. OK, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Zach, Andreas, Daniel and Lando. Wonderful to hear from you all as ever and all the very best for the season and to look at these stunning liveries is a real treat. So thank you to everyone at McLaren for tonight. It's been great. Um, and thank you all to you guys, the fans, the McLaren fans and everybody watching at home all around the world. It's great to have your company. Um, guys, come on, let's just have another cheer and let's get into the spirit of this. It's been great, hasn't it? Now that we've seen these incredible cars behind us, but all, mainly the MCL 36 here in the studio, uh, well, everyone at home has actually got a chance to drive the MCL 36 what? in a virtual world. Does that even, include me? Well, yes, and your children and everyone Amazing. else. Amazing. Even before Lando and Daniel get to have a go, because they can use... Well, here we go. We can see it here. They can actually take a closer look at the car. You can have your picture taken in the virtual MTC. <laughs> All of this on <laughs> robot. Uh, Dan, you haven't had a shave in that virtual one, have you? <laughs> but, yeah, it's, you can go on to Roblox and 
yes, walk around the MDC and drive the car that even before so these guys cool. do. And you can find out more about that on uh, mclaren.com on our website. Okay, with a big thank you to our wonderful audience. One more cheer for the audience! <laughs> to all of you for tuning in, we look forward to bringing you live coverage on Sky Sports F1 throughout the season, not just the Formula 1, but of course the IndyCar season. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, and we'll see you at testing very soon. Bye! Bye.